Hi, I'm David Johnson, pastor of New Tabor Brethren Church here in Caldwell, Texas. And this is Bible Books. Welcome. Today's message, and I'm continuing in the fallen, fallen nature, rebellion. Oh boy, rebellion. Now, in this society, in this culture that we have, for some reason, the rebellious is looked up to. They see it as strength. And this is an old image of a guy named James Dean, a uh, rebel without a cause, you know, and, and a lot of people were attracted to him because he's a rebel. He's not taking anything off anybody. He's going to do things his own way, right? Why are we attracted to that? Why do we see that as something to look up to and, and to be strengthened by? Well, rebellion is part of our fallen nature. It is one of the things in our fallen nature we must resist. It is God repellent because the rebellious are proud and God resists the proud. It's the attitude that says, no rules, on my own, I'm exclusive, I'm original. Nothing could be further from the truth. I see people walk around with rebellious garb on and, and they, they mar and mar their bodies or whatever, and they have all kind of weird stuff around them, and they think they're original. They just look like everybody else that does what they do. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9 speaks of that. It says, what has been will be again, and what has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Nobody goes out on their own and does something original. Everything you will ever think or do has already been done before. So nobody is exclusive. 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 23 says, Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Did you know that stubbornness is rebellion's first cousin? So it's not something cute. It's not something that we should say it's okay. No, no, no. Rebellion is not strength. It's not something that, that is admirable in anybody. Rebellion is weakness, as a matter of fact. Rebellion is shameful. It speaks to me of insecurity because rebellion causes dysfunction and frustration. And it also causes dysfunction in people you come in contact with. And they are frustrated with you when you are rebellious. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 11 says, Evildoers foster rebellion against God. See, rebellion is against God, whether it is committed against your brother or sister. When you commit sin against your brother or sister, you commit sin against God. So we look at Psalm 68 and verse 6. It says, the rebellious dwell in a dry land. I've heard people say, well, you know, we're all sinners. Well, that excuse doesn't, doesn't mean that you can live in darkness and dryness. That's no excuse for that at all. Yes, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, but it's not anything at all to be proud of. There are guaranteed consequences to your and my rebellion. 1 Samuel chapter 12, 15 says, If you do not obey the Lord, and if you rebel against His commands, His hand will be against you, not y'all, you, as it was against your ancestors. And again, in Isaiah 63, 10, we get another warning. It says, Yet they rebelled and grieved His Holy Spirit, so he turned and became their enemy. God did. And he himself fought against them. So who out there really wants to be God's enemy? I don't. And I know you don't either. Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 through 15 says, How you have fallen from heaven, morning star. This is speaking of Lucifer, the devil. Son of the dawn, you have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars. I will sit enthroned on the mount of the assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. How many times has Satan said the word I? When you're walking in rebellion, you're going to hear that in your spirit. I, 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 I. The cure is 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It simply says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, man, humble yourself, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Humility is the cure. If we will learn to be humble before God, then he will not be against us. He'll be for us and he'll lift us up. Okay? Beware of rebellion. 
The Lord bless you. I hope you have an excellent week. God bless you. We'll see you next time on Bible Boost.